Hi everyone and welcome to another tutorial with me Rahul. In this tutorial I want to show you how we can achieve pagination in your Droplet app with the Xano backend. This would be a slightly longer tutorial because I will show you how you would set up your Xano endpoint and how you would build an app with that endpoint. This is a sample app that I've already created. I'll show you what this app does and then we'll create this demo app in in this tutorial as well. So I have a endpoint that returns 15 records and in my use case I only want to show five records on a screen. This is a very simple app so it'll be easy to understand. So you can already see that this is my first page and we have five records and if I click next it will show me the next five records and if I click next again it will show me the last five records. If you notice the next button is missing here because we have reached the end of the list so if we hit go back you'll see the five records here and if i go back you'll see the previous button is missing here as well because we have reached the top of our list so i hope you guys are excited let's get started uh first we will set up the xano side of things and then we'll come back to draft it and design this app so we'll go to xano We'll start by creating an API endpoint. It would be a CRUD operation. I've created a special table for this demo. Uh, so we'll choose that. And then we will do a get. And what you want to name this is demo for simplicity and save it. Okay. Looks like we already have a demo point. So we'll do demo Xano and save it. So we have a demo Xano endpoint created. Now what we'll do is first let me just run this as it is and show you what happens. So when I run it, I would see a list of 15 records here. And I can go back, close this. So the first thing we'll do here is we'll add an input. It would be an object. We can call it external. And then we'll give some structure to this. Uh, we want to give an integer for the page number. So I'll call this page and save it. Default value, we can start with one and save it and save this. So we are set up with this. Now we'll move on to our function stack. I will click here, go to output, and in output you would see we have a paging option here. So we'll click on the pencil icon, we will enable paging. In my use case, I wanna do five records per page and then select the total item count as well. So this will give us the total entries that we have in our call and save it. And then we would go on to external and in the external query, we would select input and we'll select the external object. And then we can save this. It's as simple as that. The next thing that we wanna do is when I run and test it, if everything is working as expected. So we have page number one. If I run this, it gives me the current page one, the first five records. And then let's try to see if we can get page number two. So let's run this. And you can see now the page is, current page is two, and we get the record starting from ID six to 10, which is right. And then I can close this. So this was the Xano setup, pretty simple. Uh, we have our endpoint here. And then let's move on to a Drapid app. So in this app, I already created the Xano service. And then I have created this get endpoint. Let me start from the beginning, it'll be easy. So a service is created. I want to add an endpoint. It'll be a get endpoint. It will get 
all records. And then the path, I would like to add this right here, the demo Zana. And what we also want to do is we want to do a query here. So I'll add a question mark, type in external. So this is the object that we gave to Zano. And then we'll do something like uh, we want to pass an object. So we'll do curly braces, page, and then a colon. And then I would do a variable here because this page number will keep changing. So we can call it page again and close this. So we'll do page one for now and let's test it. There we go. So we got the first page with the five records and then just wanna test it again to see if we get the second page as well. So when I test this, I get the second page too, which is awesome. You can see the current page is two, and now I can save this endpoint. So we have a get records endpoint, and then done. One thing that we will do to do the next and previous buttons, we will add a screen variable. I will call it page for lack of imagination. Then I will do it would be a number and we can give it an initial value of one. Uh, hit enter. When you notice this yellow dot, that means the entry has been saved. And then we'll save our screen variable. Screen variables are something new and really cool. I love using them. I hope you guys enjoy them too. So we have a screen variable created. So now what we want to do is we will add our fetch endpoint. Uh, with fetch, you need list as well. So first, let me just set up this fetch endpoint. It's going to use my Xano service and get records. And in the query params, I want to give my string variable page. And you can see it's already fetching the demo data here, but we don't need to use that. So now on fetch, I want to do a list because we are receiving a list of objects. List and then uh, a text component to show our text that we receive from our backend. So that's it, text. And in our text, sorry, I think I missed out one part. So our list needs data and the data would be items. And then in text, we would do our handlebar notation. I hope you are familiar with it. And I can do a temporary variable here. I can just say a list. You guys can name it whatever you like. And then I want to map it to I'll go around to our list item and map it to the title. So you can see we're getting the first five records. Uh, the next thing that I would like to add here is a view, and in that view, I'll add two buttons. So it'll be a button. You can do button outline this time. Add one, add two, and just to make them different, uh, what I will do is in this view, I want to show them in a one line so I can do row and align them in the middle. Or maybe we can do space around so they will have some space between them. Uh, I would also give a slight margin at the bottom so they're not right at the bottom of the screen. Uh, let's do 64 because we have plenty of room on our screen. So you can now you notice that they went up from the bottom. And now let's configure these. 
So this one would be previous. So I can say previous. And to set it up, what we want to do is we will have an action here, which is set variable. So on these buttons, we will be changing our page screen variable to go up and down the pages. So I only have one screen variable page. I'll set that. The new value would be page. And then we will use the transform function to do a decrement. Which is pretty cool. We can do this all without any code. And same way, I want to make this the next button. So I'll go here, type in next, not nest. And then add another action on this. That would be set variable, page. We'll do page again. And then we'll transform it with increment. Uh, let me make these buttons for the fixed width so the next one isn't that squished. So what I can do is come to the styling part and I will give it a width of say 100 points. This should increase in width and I'll give this one 100 as well just for that uniformity. So we look pretty good here uh, in our fetch. We have page as a query param, which is correct. So let's test this out if it's working. We get the first five records, hit next, we get the next five records, and then when you hit next again, we get the next 15 records. And now, one thing I want to do here too is I want to hide these buttons. If there is no next page, because if I hit next now, it will go to an empty page, which we don't want. So this is our previous button. We want to do some conditional displaying here. And the conditional display. Okay, one thing I forgot to mention, we would need to put this view in our fetch component itself. Let me slide it up. So what that does is it basically gives me a chance to use my fetch results. So what I want to do is if there is a previous page, only then show me the previous button because we are on the first page. There are no records before these. So you can see the previous button gets hidden. And we'll do the same for the next page. So we will look at next page. If it exists, please show me the next button. Let's test this out. So next, you can see we have both buttons here. And if I do next, now the next button hides because there's no other records. And then we can do this. So hopefully I was able to explain this all to you and it wasn't such a long video that I expected it to be. Let me know if you have any questions. I would love to answer those for you. Thank you and have a great day.